Hi and welcome to another episode of PeaceMeg TV. In this video we're going to be having a look at the latest update to Slider Revolution 5. Now this is a major update and it's version 5.4. There's a whole range of new add-ons, a whole range of new features, effects. There's a ton of things alongside the normal bug fixes and tweaks and enhancements you're going to get. So what I'm going to do is just take you through some of those new features in this video and then in future videos I'm going to go in and show you each one of those new add-ons in depth and give it its own dedicated video alongside some of the other updates that have been added to this. Things like the Ken Burns effect, the different slide effects and so on. So let's kick things off with one of the biggest updates to this and that's the whole range of add-ons that have been added to this to make it even more feature-packed than this slider revolution has been when it comes to version 5. Now we've already seen things like the whiteboard and the last big update brought us backups and WordPress gallery and so on but there's a whole ton of new stuff in there. Now before I move on and show you these add-ons, one thing I want to sort of make clear is the fact that to be able to get access to these add-ons, you need to have a registered copy of Slider Revolution 5. That means it can't be something that's shipped with a theme that you purchased. You have to have access to the full serial numbered version of it. So if you don't have access to that and you want these extra add-ons and extra features, then you need to go and purchase a license. I would highly recommend doing that anyway because it gives you the option to keep your copy of Slider Revolution up to date because you generally have to wait for the themes that come out to be updated and that can take days or weeks before you get an update. That means you could miss out on features, bug fixes and anything else that goes with it. So if you've got that, then you have access to all of these extra add-ons. So what I've done is on the slide revolution section on the left hand side, I've come down and I've chosen add-ons. As you can see, there's all the range of add-ons we have available. Now you may need to clear your cache if you don't see these, if you've updated your version of, uh, of Slider Revolution 5. Clear any caches you may use on your website, your browser cache and anything else like that, just to make sure you're seeing everything you want. But as you can see, there's a ton of add-ons on here now. Like I say, we had things like the whiteboard and so on before, but we now have things like social sharing, coming soon and maintenance, holiday snow, particle effects, polyfold scroll effects. You can create custom 404 pages, adjacent posts, film strips. You can even have dedicated login pages that are all done inside Slider Revolution 5, which is really, really cool. It allows you to get much more creative over just a simple, plain, vanilla sort of 404 page. I like the fact that you can now come in and create your own login pages using this as well, which again is a really cool feature. Like I say, I'm going to go through these in a lot more detail in a dedicated video for each one of the ones that I think are really going to be relevant. So we'll take a look at creating 404 pages, login pages and so on in their own dedicated video soon. But they're easy to add on. If you've got that full version of it, all you need to do is simply click install this add-on and then that function becomes available to you as part of your Slider Revolution installation. Pretty cool, pretty easy. So next up, let's take a look at some of the other things that have been added into this new update. Now, one of the things that's really hot at the moment in web design is the ability to have uh, gradients in your design. They can really accentuate various different aspects of your page layout. Now, this is something that's been introduced in the latest version of Slider Revolution 5, and it gives you the ability to not only create colored backgrounds, you now create gradient backgrounds. So what I've done is I've come into one of my blank sliders, and as you can see where we've got the normal options for the source for the background of our slide you can see we've got the normal things like the main and background image and so on and colored which has been there for quite some time but now we have a color picker available to us which is a quick and easy way of sort of choosing that color in a standard kind of color picker way you can input any kind of names that you want to give this you can give it a hex value you can set the opacity you can create core colors custom colors and save those out but we've also got the option now for gradient colors. So once I choose that, you can see that changes the dialog box, opens up our color picker, and we can then create our own customized gradients in there. So we can start with something like this, and you can see we've got a simple gradient. And if you're used to something along the lines of Photoshop, then you're going to find that the way that this works is very intuitive. You've got the color sections, and you've got the actual graduation. So when you drag this over, you can see the graduation effect changes. You can see it replicates on both options. You can see we've got different kinds of orientation on this. We can have a horizontal, we can have vertical, we can have radial. Every time we make a change on there, you can see it changes in the little preview window. If we want to, we can change the colors of any of these. So let's just say we want to change this color and we want to sort of come over and we'll 
introduce some actual physical color into it. You can see that does that very quickly and easily. We can click on the second one and choose a different color on there. So let's just say we'll go for a really horrible kind of teal color, which doesn't match up in the slightest, but you can see exactly what we're doing. Or we can say, like I say, we can come over and we can choose a preset color and we can just go through and set up some basics in there. So we've got some presets that have been set up. You can see we can click and expand that out so we can create custom presets on here. So if we're doing this on a regular basis, we can set up our custom preset. We can then call that back up when we create our next slide and our third slide and so on and so forth. Really, really cool way of doing things. So you can go through and do that. You can add extra points into this if you want to by simply clicking and you'll see that adds the extra point in there, which we can then click, choose a different color. So you can see that now starts to introduce it. We can then adjust the actual positioning of that whole range of different things we can do on there really pretty cool very very straightforward and simple once we've done that click the tick that now applies that to our background and you can see now we've got that gradient applied with our animation effect and so on really cool very very quick and easy so next up there's been some updates to the Ken Burns effect so when we come into our main background we've got source we can choose the image and you can see I've already got an image selected so if I come into the Ken Burns section I can then enable this, and once we do that, that brings up a whole range of options for the Ken Burns effect. You can see we've got some normal options like the scale of the to and from, any horizontal or vertical offsets if we want to rotate it. But one thing we have now which is new is the blur filter. So we can now go through and we can apply a blur to this as well. So we could easily come in and say we want to go from 105% to 100, and we'll say we want the blur to be something along the lines of uh, from, should we say, 5 to 0. We can hit save on that and if we just jump over to a test section now and refresh that you'll see we now have a blur effect as well so we get the zoom and the blur effect takes place alongside it so we can set that transition of size and scale and rotation and apply a blur effect to it as well so you can create some really kind of nice effects on there all very easy very intuitive so i'd highly recommend checking that out and having a test with that to see the kind of effects that you can create on there so one of these new add-ons gives us one of the great features, which is the new thing called Slicey. So I've activated that add-on, and if we take a look now in the slider settings, we've got a new option on the right-hand side that is Slicey. So if I click on that, you get the option, like we do with the 3D and Parallax, we can now enable that option for our slides. So as we click on that, you'll see that brings up a whole range of different options that we can then configure for this particular add-on. Now for this overview, I'm not going to go in and edit those. I'm going to leave them as they are. So once we've enabled that, we just need to make sure we hit save to ensure that that now becomes active and we'll just jump over to our slider. So we'll come in the slide editor. Once we've done that, we'll just make sure we've got a slide active and we're going to come down to the add layer option and you'll see we now have a new entry called Slicey. I can click on that and that now allows me to add a new Slicey layer. So I can go through and make any changes that I want on that. For now, we'll leave those as they are so we can see them with their default set and we'll click on add. So that now adds that information in there for us. So if we now just quickly save and preview that, we can see what Slicey is doing. So we'll just click on save slide and then we'll just click on the preview option. And you'll see once it does that, you can see the new section now gives us a sort of 3D effect where that particular object starts to fly out of the screen towards us. So we can use that to highlight various different elements and place other objects inside it. So let's just say we'll position that, we'll resize it, position it where we want. We say let's go for center, center. Once we've done that, let's just hit save. We can see that that now will update and show us this particular part of the image. So you can see that now gives us the ability to create this quite cool zoom effect where we've got a second layer and maybe a third layer, a fourth layer, and so on, where you can create these pretty cool effects. Now, once you create that effect and you've resized it and done anything you want with it, if you want to make any changes to the add-on, you can just simply make sure it's selected, come up to the add-on section, click on there, and you can see we have Slicey. Just click to enable it, and you can see then we can adjust all the different options. So we've got, we can set blurs on there, we can set any sort of shadow blur and so on, the shadow strength, the color of the shadow, all the different kinds of things we want to do, even the Z index, the offsets, and so on. So... Pretty cool, and you can get really creative with this and get some really nice effects on there. So that's just the very, very basics of Slicey. Now, there's, like I say, there's a lot more you can do with this, and we'll take a look at this in a lot more detail in some dedicated video where I can show you how to use this and get some really nice effects on some sliders. So that's Slicey covered. Let's take a look at some of the other things that have been added into this. Add slider from template. 
And once we've done that, you can see all of our options available. So let's just go over the premium template so we can filter it down to see only the ones that are available if we've purchased this. And let's come through and let's just say, I'm gonna choose this parallax zoom slices. Let's take a little look at that. So we can click on the preview and we can see exactly what this new feature does. So you can see this is showing us the slices. It's a parallax effect. So we've got this kind of zooming in effect, which is pretty cool. Really quite nice, professional. As you can see, with if we adjust the angle of those slices and so on, we can get some pretty creative effects on there, which, like I say, looks really, really good. So let's just cancel out of that one a second. And let's take a look at the film strip effect so we can see what that kind of does. So we click on there. If we scroll down, you can see this is the film strip, strip effect. Pretty cool. It looks like we've got a mask on top of it, which we can see through the text and we can see the underlying images which is a really nice effect. As you can see, we've got a different effect there. We've got one layer over the top of the other, and we've got a sort of transitioning set of images behind. Again, another pretty cool effect. All pretty cool, especially with the blur effect on top of it. So that's a couple of those options. Custom 404 pages, let's take a look at what they can look like. So we go click on there, and we'll see this is a custom 404 page. Looks a little bit more interactive than just your basic blank page or page you just take a picture on looks pretty cool as you can see as we move the mouse around we get that sort of parallax effect the background moving around pretty nice effect jump out of that and you can see we've got quite a few different options available we can go through and take a look at some of the new features that have been added in but all in all the amount of add-ons and updates and new effects and new filters and so on that have been added to version 5.4 slider evolution makes it worthwhile getting the full version of it because there's so much you can do with that with those whole new range of add-ons. Well, that's what I want to show you. This is the 5.4 update for Slider Revolution 5. Like I say, we're going to go through in future videos and we're going to take a look at some of these different effects and we're going to dig deep into those and see how we can use them to create great looking sliders and take your website and your sliders to the next level. Well, I hope you found this video useful and informative. Hope it's given you insight into some of those new features that are available to you in this latest update. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all the new content and see when we release those new video tutorials covering all of these new effects. As always, if you've got any comments or questions or feedback on this video or anything else on the channel, please pop those in the comment section below. We read everything you post and we try to answer as many questions as possible. Well, until next time, take care.